Hi. Now in this tutorial what I want to show you is how we factorize quadratic expressions like these that contain the first term which is always x squared and you'll notice they've got an x term and a constant on the end. Three terms in fact. We often call these trinomials. Now how do we factorize expressions like this? What I'd like want to do is just take you back to expanding a pair of brackets something like this okay suppose we had say x plus 3 being multiplied by x plus 4 remember in the usual way you do x times each of the terms in the bracket here and then you follow it with 3 times each of the terms in the bracket so first of all you would do then x times x and that would give you x squared then you would go on to do the x times the next term in the bracket, the 4. So you do x times the 4, and that would give you plus 4x. Then you would do the plus 3 now times the x, so that would be that one there, plus 3x it would give you. And then finally, you do the 3 times the 4. 3 times 4 is 12. And if we simplify this, then we've got the x squared term and the 4x and the 3x can group together and that gives 7x and then you finally got the constant on the end plus 12. Alright, now I'd just like to do one more expansion for you just to illustrate this further. Let's suppose we had say different signs in the bracket this time a minus sign x minus 5 and say a plus sign x plus 2 say and we had to expand this again we would do x times x which is x squared and then we would do the x times the plus 2 and that would give plus 2x and the minus 5 times the x would be minus 5x and finally the minus 5 times the plus 2 which is minus 10 and if we simplify this it's going to be identical then to x squared and 2x minus 5x is minus 3x and you've got the constant on the end minus 10. Now why have I done this in colors? Well you'll see in a moment it's trying to bring out certain features that you get in the expansion. You'll notice that each of these results in this kind of pattern structure. The x squared came from multiplying the x with the x, okay, in the first part of the bracket. And the green number on the end was the result of multiplying the two numbers together inside the bracket. Like this one, minus 5 times 2 was the minus 10. 3 times the 4 was the 12. But it's this blue value, the x term, which is the one that we've got to also look at. Not only did the numbers multiply together to give you the number on the end, but they grouped together, like in this one, 3x and 4x, they grouped together to give you the number in the middle, the 7x. In this one, not only did minus 5 times 2 give the minus 10 on the end, but minus 5x and 2x grouped together to give you the term in the middle, minus 3x. So, what I'm going to show you then is how do we factorize these? Well, let's just bring them up again and to save time I've just written them out again in color, okay? So, if we start with the first one, okay? We know that this must have come from expanding two brackets. In fact, all of them would have come from expanding two brackets, okay? And because we've got an x squared at the front here, that must have been the result of an x there and an x there being multiplied together, as you can see up here, okay? Now we need to think of two numbers that multiply together to give plus 2, and yet group together to give a 3, a 3x. Three what could they be? Well, two numbers that multiply together to give 2 is just going to be 2 and 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And a 2 and a 1 group together to give 
a 3. I'll show you. We'll put a plus 2 there and a plus 1 there. So we would give get our x squared here. We would get our green 2 by doing 2 times the 1. And when we group that combination and that combination together, we've got 2x here, 2 times x. We've got x times 1, which is 1x. 2x and 1x gives us the blue 3x. So there you go. That's it. Factorized. Now what about this example? x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, To factorize this, it's going to be two brackets again in the usual way. We're going to have an x and an x at the front so that when we multiply these two together, they give us the x squared. We're looking for two numbers now that multiply together to give the plus 6, yet we need to get minus 5x when we look at that pairing and that pairing there. So what two numbers can you think of that multiply together to give plus 6 and group together to give a minus 5? Is it going to be, say, a 6 and a 1? 6 times 1 plus 6 times a plus 1 gives plus 6 when multiplied together. That looks good. But when you group them, a 6 and a 1 gives a 7. And we want a minus 5x. What about a 3 and a 2? Plus 3 and a plus 2. Plus 3 times plus 2 is plus 6. But when you group them together, you get plus 5. Ooh, we need a minus 5. But on further inspection, we get a clue here. We need a negative number here. We can get plus 6 and minus 5 if we change this to minus 3 times minus 2. That will give us plus 6. And yet minus 3 and minus 2, when grouped together, give us minus 5. So what we've got here is minus 3 and minus 2. So minus 3 times minus 2 is plus 6. And then this gives us minus 3x, and this gives us minus 2x. Minus 3x, minus 2x, minus 5x. OK? So watch out for your signs. They might have to change. Now, this next one. Again, x squared plus 2x minus 8. We've got our x squared at the front, so we know that that would have been an x there and an x there to give us the x squared. We need two numbers that multiply together to give the minus 8. And we need to remember that this combination here must come to plus 2. Well, minus 8, we've got a negative number here, unlike the two examples here which had two pluses in. When you've got a minus number, you know that the signs in these two brackets must be different. One's got to be a plus and one's got to be a minus. So what could it be that multiplies together to give minus 8? Could it be, say, minus 8 times plus 1? That gives minus 8. But if you group these two numbers together, you get minus 7. And we want plus 2. Could it be 8 and minus 1? That's no good. That's still going to give minus 8 when you multiply them together. But it's going to give plus 7x. Or it could be a 4 and a minus 2. That's the combination that we need, a 4 and a minus 2. Plus 4 times minus 2 would give minus 8. And a 4 minus a 2 would give a 2, a plus 2. So that's the combination we need, plus 4 and minus 2. There you go. Plus 4 times minus 2 is the minus 8. And here we've got 4x, and here we've got minus 2x. 4x minus 2x is 2x. So there you go, factorised. OK, we've got one more to go. Again, two brackets, x and an x. And you'll notice in this one, we've got a minus and a minus. 
What's it going to be? It's got to be a minus 3 and a plus 1. Minus 3 and a plus 1. Minus 3 times plus 1, minus 3. And on this loop, we've got minus 3x. And on this one, we've got plus x, which gives minus 2x. I've also purposely left out the colored brackets, OK? Purely because you're not going to obviously want to keep putting these in every time. So really, this is basically what you should aim to write down. OK, well, I hope you've been able to follow that tutorial, OK? And uh, that gives us an introduction then to factorizing trinomials, th quadratic expressions containing three terms. Now, in the next tutorial, what I'm going to look at is putting a number in front of this x squared term. And it is a bit harder. It takes a lot more practice, but hopefully you'll go on to that tutorial and you'll be able to extend this reasoning. Okay, well, as I say, brings us now to the end of this tutorial.